So a few months ago, I had picked up a Crossman 2240. This time I fully intend on keeping this in a pistol configuration. Now, the down part about this gun is that it only comes with a right hand bolt, meaning that the receiver was made in such a way that the bolt can only be put on the right side. And that is a little annoying when you have to take your hand off the pistol grip to actually pull the bolt back. So I made this thing, as the only one on the market that's left handed is $75. Yeah, I'm not paying that. So I jumped into a CAD software and designed this thing just to see if I could. All right, so enough of me rambling, let's get this thing printed out. All right, so these are the two pieces that need to be printed out on my printer. It took a little under four hours to do so. Uh, needs a lot of cleaning, especially the, uh, the grooves of the rails. This piece also needs to be filed down and hand fitted. Basically this whole thing needs to be hand fitted really, as the desktop printers aren't quite that precise just yet. There's actually nothing holding this in place except for the curvature of the tube that holds CO2 on the gun, so no glue, no screws, no nothing. Well, except for the ones that came with the gun of course, but there's no positive indent or anything to keep this thing in place except for the geometry of the gas tube, and quite frankly that is all we need for this thing. Now the only thing we're missing now is just a black coat of paint and we would be all set. All right, so here are all the parts painted black. There's also one additional piece I printed out and that was this little rail on the bottom. Just simply slides into place. This, and there's a little notch there that hooks into this little area here. And that keeps it from torquing around. And cat. Let's get this thing put together and uh, hopefully the paint hasn't messed with any of the tolerances. All right, so back from the shooting test, this target here was the one I shot free-handed. I decided to put six rounds downrange. Technically I was wanting to do a five shot group, but we had one flyer sitting right here. So I decided to reshoot that and the grouping we got off of this, I haven't even measured this yet actually. We're looking at just slightly over an inch. Uh, I was pretty sure that this gun could do better, so what I ended up doing off camera was reshooting this group. I put a 10 round group and actually took the stock off of my 1377, which is why it's sitting here without a stock at the moment. Like this. I actually like this configuration. It's a short little thing. But I intend this thing to be a handgun, and it is going to be a handgun. So out of 10 rounds, we got, I think also the same thing. Slightly under an inch, actually. The largest group I was to identify, I think it was this one right here. That is 18 milli, hello. Okay, so we had a little caliper failure there. The largest group I could identify in here, yep, it was that one, is 0.8. Hello. Man, seven years of YouTube, I'm still fighting with the camera's autofocus. Can you believe that? Anyways, so slightly better group, 10 shot group with a stock. So clearly the other group was me, but coming off handed, that was not too bad. 25 feet, not a pistol shooter, but hey, for a 3D printer receiver, I'm surprised it didn't affect the accuracy any at all. A couple problems with this gun. Uh, there is some gas blowback. Uh, either from the bolt or from where the receiver meets the gas transfer port. I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't been able to locate it. I'm fixing to throw an O-ring on there just to see if that helps any. But unfortunately, they don't make an O-ring this size, so I'm still hunting for one of those. Not quite sure what's going on. Dimensions all match up with the stock receiver, so I'm not quite sure if this is going to be a repairable thing on this particular receiver. All right, so one thing I would improve about this receiver is the fit and probably how I did this little tray down here to hold the bolt and the connection point between the this half of the receiver and this half of the receiver. 
as that is literally a one millimeter piece of plastic that's actually hanging off of it. In fact, mine's actually cracked on one side. So this is gonna get replaced pretty soon. Another thing I did with the gun, under mount rails for a light. All right, so the whole purpose of this gun was to actually make a gun that I can use during the night because we have this frog problem at our pond here. We have this pond in the backyard. And during the warmer seasons, there are just a bunch of frogs making a ton of noise, keeping everybody up at night. So we've kind of resorted to shooting them. And since all of my other air guns are sighted with something like this, you can't really use that at night because they're not illuminated and magnification size at night just, just simply don't work. Well, that's pretty much it about this gun. Even with a 3D printed receiver, it doesn't affect accuracy any, if at all. In fact, they were still getting under one inch groups at a 25 feet, which is the advertised accuracy for this gun, pretty much. Now, everything about this gun is still stock, other than the barrel and the fact that I 3D printed a receiver for it. In fact, the barrel for this gun actually came from the 1377. So this is no longer a 22 caliber gun as they make a lot more variety of pellets in 17 caliber and I just so happen to have a ton of 17 caliber ammunition lying around. So, so far, this gun still outshoots me, as shown by the stock. I am not a handgun shooter. One thing I've noticed about this gun is that it doesn't like being shot at very high powers, as installing a new cartridge of CO2 takes about 20 rounds or so for the accuracy to get back to where it was. Now, the market has a lot of power adjustment screws, quote unquote, but they all require some sort of tool. Now, I don't like carrying extra tools on out in the field, so I think for the next project, I might 3D print a toolless power adjustment screw. Tell me what you guys think.